Hey, I'm Kamal, and I'm an actor. Well, let me back up. I'm a professional actor, but that's not what I'm doing, sitting here talking to you. Today, I'm just Kamal, a father of two wonderful children, an American, a cheesehead, go Packers, and I'm a Muslim. Now, I know in today's cultural climate, none of those things are mutually exclusive and not a big deal, but it wasn't always the case. It took a long time to string that whole sentence together and say that with pride. Why you ask? Well, at the risk of dating myself, back in my day, Americans really didn't think of Muslims. Not, not, not because we weren't there, but because we really weren't in the public eye. And uh, some of us, a lot of us, really didn't mind that. Well, that had to change. In 1988, a small group of visionaries saw a need to change the status quo. Dr. Maher Hatou and Salam Amriyadi, along with like-minded individuals, knew that something else had to be created. An organization that spoke to the changing parties of our community and of our country. The Muslim Public Affairs Council was born in all of its fashion-forward splendor. The idea of impact did not start from a vacuum. It was part of the diligent work uh, for the future of Islam in America, which aims at having Islam and the Muslims as an active part of the American pluralism in the future that can affect the decision and that can guide the society. Lincoln is credited with arguably the most important cultural transformation in American history. But that transformation started with the defining relationship with Frederick Douglass, who articulated the political, social, and moral imperative that emancipation would bring. This partnership changed the course of our nation's history because two men had the courage to exchange ideas. Granted, those are massive shoes to fill, but working with the principles of our faith and the best examples of our nation's leaders, MPEC set out to redefine what it meant to be a Muslim in America. To, for the lack of a better phrase, come out of the closet, to embrace our neighbors, our communities, our local, state, and national governments. But let's keep it real. Some are critical of MPEC for forging these partnerships. From within the community, words like sellout come to mind. And those that are bent on seeing American Muslims marginalized were always labeled as others or infiltrators. But the fact of the matter is, since its inception, MPAC has, is, and always will be values driven. They see it by making the American Muslim community part of the civic and political fabric of America, not only a patriotic act, but a prophetic one as well. If I was going to try to capture all of the profound impact that impact has had, it would have to be hope. Impact is an organization that gets up every day, its members, its staff, its board gets up every day believing that if we put our time, energy, and effort into improving understanding, that understanding will prevail. The Suspicious Activity Reporting Initiative was started here in Los Angeles, and it was actually an initiative that became a national program. It was sought with suspicion, especially from the, the Muslim communities. We really uh, learned the, the true value of impact in that they had something to say, to the point where we gave them the material and we said, criticize it, critique it, give us your recommendations. And we adopted probably 90% of those recommendations, which made the program stronger. Even when we disagree on certain issues, we're not disagreeable. There is no conflict between being a faithful Muslim and a loyal American. And I think that's one of the things that this partnership has, has shown. So I was in Detroit when the bombing happened. The first person I called was Haris uh, of Impact, and immediately he assembled a team of media advisors for me, um, political advisors, people who would prep me for interviews, um, and really uh, just behind the scenes with me the whole way. It was through you know, Impact that I was able to make connections with press people, the op-ed piece that, I, that was published in the New York Times, the help that I was afforded by Impact, really, um, I could never put a price on it. Our country has a lot to learn. Our policymakers have a lot to learn about this community, about the religion. And the reason I say that is because if Impact existed in 1939, 40, 41, 42, 
Japanese Americans would never have been sent to camp. In a historic development, President Barack Obama met with the director of MPAC's Washington, D.C. office to recognize the work MPAC has done to make America a more perfect union and developing young leaders. MPAC has since met multiple times with the president and his senior advisors on various policy issues. Just a few years ago, this would not have been possible. Growing up in Los Angeles in the 80s with a name like Kamal wasn't easy. I mean, I heard it all. Camel, camel jockey, commode, <laughs> caramel colored popcorn. Now, I know kids can be mean, but a huge part of that ignorance stems from the fact that most people didn't see any meaningful representations of Muslims on TV or at the movies. Now, I can go on and on about that. Have you seen Brett Hopper, your tenor from downstairs? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, no. Have you seen him or not, sir? He was here, but now he's not. Uh, there is leak. Where's Hopper? But I digress. I know there's still a long road ahead and a lot of ignorance still exists, but the truth is there are a lot of news and media producers out there who want to do more. They want to understand me, my kids, my community better. MPAC knew this years ago and actually made a difference. In honor of your effort to portray a positive image of Islam, the Muslim Public Affairs Council presents the Entertainment Media Award to Spike Lee for the making of Malcolm X. Thank you very much. I'm very, very honored for this award, the MPAC Voices of Courage and Conscience Media Award. There was, however, very little courage, and one would hope an ordinary amount of conscience at work at producing our Israel-Palestine episode of Parts Unknown. When I was uh, in the fourth season of 24, we had a story about a Muslim-American family who were perpetrating a terror plot. And MPAC contacted us really just to have a, a sit down, a conversation about the potential incendiary aspect. And there was concern over the way even the show was being marketed, where on the billboard, if there was a family that said uh, they could be next door. The encounter was very, very uh, honest. It was very you know, blunt. It was fair-minded. And I think it really did have an impact on how we continued to tell that story, particularly in the wake of 9-11. So MPAC has been a tremendous resource in terms of getting it right. We're straight, please. You know, even today, I worry about the kind of world my kids will inherit. Every parent does. It can be frightening, especially when you consider how fast and at times reckless this world is moving. Can you turn left here, please? The difference between our kids and us is they'll be equipped to not only be a part of, but lead on every level of society. Equipped with something that we take for granted, pride in American Muslim identity. Those seeds are being planted today. I applied for MPAC in general after the Boston Marathon bombings. And I just remember thinking, I need to get out there. I, wanna, I want to be in the public policy spectrum and just influence change. The value that MPAC adds is that it creates a platform for discussion on these very issues that do define the Muslim American experience. And I think these summits do showcase the power of youth to not only envision how they can play a role in their future, but actually being part of the change now. It gives so many people an opportunity to interact with uh, policy and government officials in a way that most people never get a chance to do. We eventually wrote this Declaration of Civic Responsibilities for Muslim American Youth. The next day, we read it at the White House, and it was really a phenomenal experience. And one of the staffers at the National Security Council was so impressed that he took a copy to give to the president. This is history to me. When I look back, inshallah, and like my kids are able to live in a country where Muslims don't have to face Islamophobia, I know myself and my colleagues contributed to that. It is incumbent upon Muslim Americans to have their stories told, and that's why it is profoundly advantageous for those voices to find their way into mass media. I'd love to see more Muslim American writers becoming film, become writers, become filmmakers, and, and actors, and storytellers. I can definitely see us becoming the next Attorney General's uh, Secretary of State. Um, I want to say President, and maybe that is very eager, but no, it, it will happen. I know that the source of all these leaders will come back to MPAC. I have no doubt about it. 
for a lot of us, this place symbolizes a lot of conflicting things. But the bottom line is, we're all working here to make this world a better place, not just for ourselves and our families, but for our neighbors, our communities, and our country. And when you cut through the mumbo jumbo of this group or that party or organization and look at their histories, partnerships, and track record, the only question that really matters is, are they making this world a better place for everyone?